Some people wind up And when you want to play a ball In the distant hell hole It's the world war But all I see is films Where we kill and lose despair Men angry young men Will you make it out of hell? Oh, sometimes Get up and voice the side side There's no time for you well, as to the bride, I love her, I'm going to miss her, but she, uh, she better move back to Washington, D.C. right after this event. Back to the hood is like being released from prison. Oh, oh, oh that's good. Oh, oh, oh man, is that, on is that on audio? He's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Meeting with Shelly. <laughs> Just speak from the heart. It's right? like remembering <laughs> the bad days before in prison. <laughs> and how many years did you spend in prison? Uh, I spent 26 years 26. there, <laughs> four <laughs> years on parole, okay. and now I'm free for good. <laughs>Any words you want to send out to the kids? We love them both dearly. And we wish them continued happiness and many, many years of, uh, of love together. Who did the goat dance very well? He gave me back my smile, but he kept my camera in a cell. Oh, the rogue, the red, red rogue. He cooked good omelets and stews, and I might have stayed on with him there, but my heart cried out for you. California. Oh, California, coming home Oh, make me feel good, rock and roll band I'm your biggest fan, California, coming home Oh, it gets so lonely When you're walking in the streets are full of strangers All the news you read Just give you the blues Just give you the blues I'm feeling great, I got a great 
son-in-law here. He had a great mother-in-law here. So we're happy. So I bought me a ticket. I caught a plane to Spain. Went to a party down a red dirt road. There were lots of pretty people there. Reading Rolling Stone, reading Vogue. I said, how long can you hang around? I said, a week, maybe two. Just until my skin turns brown and I'm going home to California. California, I'm coming home. Oh, will you take me as I am? Strung out on another man. California, I'm coming home. Oh, it gets so. The streets are full of strangers All the news at home You read more about the world That's beautiful Is that an anti-new concert? Will you take me as I am? Will you take me as I am? amidst a very, very fast-paced and at times hectic Calm weekend. Um, so I guess what I want to say is that I welcome us all to this day and especially to this moment of relative calm. I know there's a lot of noise in the background, but just to a moment of sanctity and holiness as we sign the marriage document that pledges Adam and Shelley to each other for the rest of their lives. Adam and Shelley, may we shower upon you the love that you so easily give to all of us today. <laughs> okay, so we're going to begin by signing the Ketubah, which is the ancient marriage document. Um, each of your witnesses, Adam and Shelley, Larry Shingleman and Wayne Pines, will sign the Ketubah. And in doing so, they attest to the fact that each will soon witness the act of your exchanging rings under the Chubba. But I think in a less technical sense, actually, you've chosen these witnesses, Larry and Wayne, dear friends of both of your families, to testify to the bonds that bring you together today. That's right. In choosing the close friends of both of your families, Larry and Wayne's signatures attest to a drama that's much larger than the exchange of rings. Yeah. Their signatures make viable that beautiful document that articulates your responsibilities to each other as husband and wife responsibilities that Jewish men and women have pledged to each other for thousands of years. Their signatures also attest to the joining of your families in a bond of love and commitment. Okay. Paul, Shirley, Marty, Lenore. Marty and yes. Lenore, Paul, Shirley. As your children are now going to formalize their commitment to each other, my blessing to you is that you continue to celebrate the joy that Adam and Shelley will undoubtedly bring to you throughout their marriage. May you find each other as comforts in the, in the inevitable moments of anxiety. May you continue to feel deep bonds of love between parent and child as your beautiful children, Shelley and Adam, stand up in the front of Okay, so now Adam and Shelley are going to be... I am about to enter into, the, into marriage with Shelley Schneiderman, whom I love and who loves me. We have committed ourselves to one another with joy and in hope. May I be worthy of Shelley's trust. May we be faithful friends, each a help and support to the other in all that comes our way. May we come to understand each other as we gain insight into our own hearts. Let us aid in each other's continuing development and in the community in which we live. I am about to enter into marriage with Adam Ducker, whom I love and who loves me. 
We have committed ourselves to one another with joy and in hope. May I be worthy of Adam's trust. May we be faithful friends, each a help and support to the other in all that comes our way. May we come to understand each other as we gain insights into our own hearts. Let us aid in each other's continuing development in the community in which we live. I'm going to ask funny. you to say the Shahatianu together, which I have translated yeah. conveniently. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melhalom shehechianu vekivianu vekivianu lazman hazet. Amen. Blessed are you, Holy One of Blessing, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this day. Amen. Okay. And the next thing that happens is that we enact something called the Kinyan, which is the acquisition of each of you of the Ketubah. And I'm going to ask each one of you to, as I tell you to, to sort of ceremonially tug the Ketubah, which will be your symbolic way of acquiring all of the responsibilities that are stated in that Ketubah to each other. Okay? So if you, Shelley Schneiderman, agree to the conditions in this Ketubah, please pull it towards you. <laughs> Just give Adam a chance. <laughs> if you, Adam Ducker, agree to the conditions specified in this Ketubah, please take hold of it. Larry and Wayne, as witnesses to Adam and Shelley's acceptance of these obligations, you may now, now sign your Hebrew names on the Ketubah where it says One of you is here and one of you is here. Lesson on the Ketubah later. I mean, the Ketubah. Yeah. 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 So, Mazel Tov, everyone. I hope this is the beginning of a day of a lot of blessing and Simcha happiness. Hot dog! Wow, look at look at this. What a coincidence. Let's get all these people. And they're all men. They're all men. <laughs> Sure they're gonna come and get us now. I'm yeah. sure they're gonna come and get us. Yeah, all right. We have a, a couple of cinnamon. Uh, a couple of cinnamon. cinnamon. How about how about some drinks in the back up there? Beautiful. Come on up.
Let me just go in a circle. Hey! 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 <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Move the veil over. Uh, Should I do it? Yep. Oh, oh here we go. Take just, there's one piece of it. <laughs> and now Shelly's mom will place her hands upon Shelly's head and grant her a blessing. Shelly and Adam, you are the most amazing couple and the most amazing individuals. Dad and I wish you a very long life, a very healthy life, a life filled with love, children, <laughs> <laughs> Most, mostly love, and the ability to communicate with each other and cooperate with each other, and mostly love each other. Thank you. 
finally will join together in celebrating the holiness of this moment by saying the Shehachianu. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shehachianu Mekiyonu Mehigiyonu Azman Azed Praise are you God, sovereign of the universe, who has granted us life, who has sustained all of us, and has enabled us to reach this day. We will now make our way to the ceremony as we allow Adam and Shelley a few moments before the chuppah. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
The one who makes this moment a glorious one, the one who makes this moment a blessing, the one who makes this moment great, will bless you, Adam, the Chatan, and you, Shelley, the Kala. <laughs> the traditional liturgy of Mi Azir formally welcomes you, Shelley, and Adam under the chuppah and also serves as a welcome to all of us, your beloved friends and family. Earlier today, Shelley and Adam's dear friends, Larry Shingleman and Wayne Pine, signed the ketubah as formal witnesses to this ceremony. In many ways, though, we, were, we are all here to serve as witnesses to the bond of love and commitment that brings you, Adam and Shelley, to this wonderful moment. Family and friends from New York, Washington, London, Florida, South Carolina, Texas, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, and closer to home here in Northern California are here to celebrate you. Shelly and Adam, you have both worked so hard to bring yourselves and all of us to this moment. From the initial email messages, to the months <laughs> of planning, to the cable car rides, the wine tasting, and the Chinese feast, you have dedicated yourselves lovingly and energetically to bringing us all here to share this beautiful day in your adopted home of San Francisco. Uh, Adam and Shelley, I think I speak for everyone here in saying thank you for allowing us to share in fun, style, and love this occasion. Thank you. Thank you. You are also you. blessed in having so much support in reaching the occasion of your wedding. It's the love and the work and the dreams and the prayers of everyone who is here that has helped to bring you to this chuppah and to this moment. You are standing here surrounded by your parents, your grandmothers, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends. And so may it be for the entirety of your lives together. May you always be surrounded by the love and support and dreams of people who love you. A midrash, a rabbinic legend, teaches that the first wedding took place in the Garden of Eden between Adam and Eve. The midrash continues by teaching that it was God who served as the matchmaker between Adam and Eve, and that it was God who prepared Eve to stand under the chuppah by braiding her hair and escorting her to Adam. The literal understanding of a God who braids hair may be challenging, but the midrash alludes to something quite profound. It suggests that in spite of all of our work and all of our desire to create lives just as we want them to be, something beyond our power brings us to the one whom we love, our Bashir, to our intended partner. Over the years, we have all been so delighted to watch you become each other's partners. For this moment, under the chuppah, the 2nd of September 2001, the 14th of the month of Elul in the year 5761, since the creation of the world, we can appreciate those mystical and mysterious aspects that have brought the two of you to this day, to this moment, to this chuppah. These few moments mark a new stage in your lives together. For all of us who are so privileged to be here, I hope this wedding reminds us of what's inspiring, awakening, mystical, and sacred in our own lives. We'll begin with a blessing over wine, followed by the betrothal blessing. And after I recite each blessing in Hebrew, we can all affirm our wishes for joy and sanctity in Adam and Shelley's marriage by responding, Amen. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe, creating the fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav et tivanu al harayot, v'asar lanu et harusot, v'hitir lanu et hanesuot lanu ayidei chupa v'kidushin, Baruch atah Adonai, Mekadesh Amo Yisrael, Al Yadei Chupa V'Kidushin. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, who makes us sacred through your commandments, commanding us to sanctify our love for each other through Chupa and through marriage, to dedicate ourselves exclusively to each other. 
Blessed are you, God, who sanctifies the people of Israel through chuppah, the wedding canopy, and kiddushin, these sacred wedding traditions. Mm -hmm. Drink, and then pass to Shelly. Adam and Shelly, as you share this cup of wine, you undertake to share all that the future will bring. May the sweetness that it holds for you be the sweeter for having tasted it together. We'll now continue with the ring ceremony. I'm just excited. <laughs> A lot of excitement up here. <laughs> we'll now continue with the ring ceremony where Adam and Shelley, you will exchange rings made of pure metal with no stones. The rings are perfect and complete circles, representing the wholeness that you've brought to each other's lives. The witnesses on your ketubah, Larry Shingleman and Wayne Pines, will join us under the chuppah to oversee the exchange of rings, as will Stacia, who has the rings. Here she is. May we have the ring that Adam is presenting to Shelley. Adam, as you face Shelley, you'll one. now place the ring on Shelley's one? right forefinger, mm -hmm. which according to mystical belief, or her right forefinger. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, according to mystical belief, has a direct connection to Shelley's heart. And as you look into her eyes, you will recite the formula which Jewish men have recited to their brides for many I centuries. As you face Shelley, repeat after me. Hare at. Hare at. Mikudeshet li. Mikudeshet li. Bitabaat zo. Bitabaat zo. Kadat Moshe ve Israel. Kadat Moshe ve Israel. By this ring. By this ring. You are made holy unto me. You are made holy unto me. As my wife. As my wife. According to the laws of Moses. According to the laws of Moses. And the people of Israel. And the people of Israel. May we have the ring that Shelley is presenting to Adam. Shelly, as you face Adam, you may now place the ring on Adam's right forefinger. As you look into his eyes, you will affirm your love and commitment. Repeat after me. Hare Ata. Hare Ata. Mikudash Li. Mikudash Li. Bitabat Zo. Bitabat Zo. Kedat Moshe ve Yisrael. Kedat Moshe ve Yisrael. By this ring. By this ring. You are made holy unto me. You are made holy unto me. As my husband. As my husband. In accordance with the laws of Moses. In accordance with the laws of Moses. And the people Israel. And the people Israel. We'll mark the completion of the betrothal part of the ceremony by reading a portion of the ketubah in English. Okay. The witnesses can sit back down. On the first day of the week, the 14th of the month of Elul in the year 5,761 years since the creation of the world, which corresponds to the second day of the month of September in the year 2001, according to the counting that we use here in San Francisco, California, in the United States of America, we witnessed that the groom, Adam, the son of Paul and Shirley, said to Shelley, the daughter of Martin and Lenore, with this ring you are consecrated unto me, according to the laws of Moses and the people of Israel. The bride, Shelley, daughter of Martin and Lenore Schneiderman, said to the groom, Adam, son of Paul and Shirley Ducker, with this ring, you are consecrated unto me, according to the laws of Moses and the people of Israel. Shelley and Adam have accepted upon themselves all the conditions of marriage as required by the laws of the Torah and the enactments of our sages. May their memories be a blessing. Adam and Shelley further agreed willingly and without compulsion to serve, honor, support, and nourish one another, to live as husband and wife, and to build together an enduring Jewish home according to the customs of Jewish men and women. This ketubah has been signed and witnessed according to the laws and traditions that began with Abraham and Sarah, were conveyed through Moshe, and affirmed by the people Israel. Adam, you will now symbolically pretend, present this ketubah to Shelley. I pick it up? Uh, maybe I'll just pass it over to her a little bit. Shelley, this ketubah is now your property. <laughs> Adam and Shelley, 
As your Ketuba states, you have promised to undertake the profound responsibility of sharing each other's lives with love, with respect, with dignity, and with humor. Whether in DC, San Francisco, Brazil, Thailand, or any of the other places <laughs> you have been together, you are so blessed to have spent the last four years sharing your lives and learning about each other. In this week's Torah reading, the Israelites are nearing the end of their 40-year wandering in the desert. While the two of you have certainly shown discipline in traveling so far, only in spans of months and not in years, I think you'll understand why the Torah reading makes me think of you. The Israelites have spent 40 years wandering in the desert, guided by the promise that there was a land that they would reach someday, a land of promise and blessing. The more circuitous their wanderings became, the greater was God's promise that they would be a people identified with a specific land. In this week in particular, the Israelites are finally standing in sight of the land of Israel after 40 years of schlepping through the desert. <laughs> Moses, their leader, commands them saying, when you enter the land that the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance and you possess and dwell in it, you shall take the first of every fruit of the ground that you bring in from the land and place it in a basket. The text continues by commanding that each person stand before an altar and make a declaration, remembering that he or she was a slave in Egypt. The text then states that God took the Israelites out of Egypt. God brought us to this place where he gave us this land, a land that flows with milk and honey. And now, each person would say, I have brought the first fruits of the ground that you have given to me, God. What's interesting about this text is that for the Israelites, their first act when they get to a land that they've spent 40 years trying to reach is that they have to remember where they came from. They have to remember that they were slaves. They have to remember that in the midst of their settling, they were wanderers, and in the midst of their wanderings, they were compelled to imagine themselves as a people who settled. I'll read another important text. Dear friends and family, we've decided to take some time off from our lives and travel around Asia for a few months. We will keep you updated by email. A later text contained a PS from Shelly. Mom and Dad Schneiderman, don't worry. Adam is taking such good care of me. Now, what is the similarity between the Israelites and your many trips together? <laughs> Despite the fact that you have lived in a couple of cities, traveled together to several continents, and probably logged more air miles, train trips, bus routes, rickshaw rides than most of us, you have nonetheless taught us all such an important teaching about what it means to be at home, whether home as a place or home as the company of another person. That whether we're traveling or at home, loving someone and sharing a life means remembering where you came from. When I reread some of the emails from your trip to Asia, I was struck by how much you communicated about yourselves alongside of telling us what you saw there. I think I speak for everyone here in saying that I could just imagine you, Adam, patiently waiting as Shelley had yet another massage in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just imagine you, Shelley, rolling your eyes and humoring Adam when he decided that the two of you should visit your 20th ancient ruins. <laughs> and it was so easy to laugh along with you in appreciating the quirks and idiosyncrasies of each other. And closer to home, you've told me how that translates. I can imagine, Adam, how you might see Shelley across the room at a party and know that she's the most beautiful, most interesting, most animated one in the room. <laughs> and that you can't wait until the evening ends when you can talk to her on your way back home. And I can imagine, Shelley, how you would describe Adam as remarkable, generous, irreverent, someone who cooks dinner for you every night but still remembers to thank you profusely for buying a pre-made salad. <laughs> Shelly and Adam, your lives are a teaching about the dynamic between journey and home. That you, like the Israelites in the desert, live in the shifting consciousness of home and travel, of security and adventure, of being an emboldener to each other, and at the same time, being a refuge. Wherever your lives take you, whether it's on a 40-year journey or the ups and downs of life closer to home, it's the humor and appreciation of each other, the love of the journey and the comfort of home that you will return to again and again as you share each other's happinesses, as you confront inevitable disappointment, and as you continually rebuild and reinvent your precious life together. That is your greatest gift to each other, and may you continue to freely give it. 
I will now recite the Sheva Brachot, the seven blessings, after which Adam and Shelley will drink from a second cup of wine, which they'll share with their parents. It's a good thing we went for the men of Shevets. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Borei peri agafen Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe and creates the fruit of the vine. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Shekol varali chodo Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe whose glory is evident in all creation. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam yotzer hadam Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe, creates man and woman. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam asher yatzar et hadam b'tzamo B'tselem demud tabni tov V'hitzkin lanu mimenu b'nye adead Baruch atah Adonai Yotzer Adam Praised are you Adonai our God who rules the universe who created people in the image of God that together they might perpetuate life Praised are you Adonai who creates man and woman May Zion rejoice as her children return to her in joy. Praised are you, Adonai, who causes Zion to rejoice in her children. Sameach tisamach reim ha'uvim Kisamech ha'cha yitzircha began eden mikadem Baruch atah Adonai Misameach atan vekala Grant perfect joy to these loving companions as you did for the first man and woman in the Garden of Eden. Praised are you Adonai who creates the joy of the bride and groom. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher baras asan v'simcha chatan v'kala Asher baras asan v'simcha chatan v'kala Kila rina dita v'chedva Ahava v'achava v'shalom v'reut Baruch <laughs> Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe, who creates joy and gladness, bride and groom, pleasure, song, delight, laughter, love, and harmony, peace and companionship. Adonai, our God, may there always be heard in the cities of Yehuda and the streets of Jerusalem, voices of joy and gladness, of happiness, voices of bride and groom, the jubilant voices of those joined in marriage under the chuppah, the voices of young people feasting and singing. Praised are you, God, who causes the groom and the bride to rejoice together.
these final moments under the chuppah at Amin Shali. May God, who's the source of love, invoke his blessing on you as you stand together under this chuppah in sacred celebration of your marriage. May you live together in harmony and faith, blessed with an ever greater capacity to love and to be loved, to share in the celebration of life and with courage and integrity face the inevitably difficult moments that life hands to all of us. May your sensitivities to each other ever increase. May you continue to learn about each other's laughter, tears, and silence. May you embolden and may you serve as refuge. May you and all of your loved ones and friends be blessed to help in the continuous creation of this world so that people everywhere may live in dignity and peace. So wonderful.
okay to applaud them, because they look great, right? It's very clear Oh, our love is here to stay But not for a year But ever and a day The radio and the telephone And those movies that we know I might be passing fancies And in time may go But oh my dear Oh our love is here to stay Or together we're Going a long, long way In time the rockies may crumble, Gibraltar may tumble, they're only made of clay, but our love is here to stay. Yeah. Right. How do they look everybody? One more, what do you think? <laughs> Come on up. They're beckoning, they're beckoning the family members here for the family and the bridal party. Yeah, come on up, everybody. Oh, let's hear, let's hear for all of them one more time. It's very clear, our love is here to stay. For well, not for a year, but ever and the day. The radio and the telephone. And the movies that we know Or maybe passing fancy And in time may go But, oh my dear Our love is here to stay Or together we're are going a long, long way In time the Rockies may crumble Gibraltar may tumble Oh, they're only made of clay But our love is here I said, our love is here Oh yeah! Our Yeah, well done. I think we're in for a party. At last, my scars were all blue. My heart was wrapped in clover. The night I looked at you. I found a dream that I could speak to you. Dream that I I could call my own. I found a thrill to press my cheek to. A thrill that I I have never known. Hey, you smile.
just an old sweet song that keeps Georgia on my mind. I said, Georgia. Oh, my Georgia, no peace would I find. It's just an old sweet song, listen to this, that keeps Georgia on my mind. Oh, yes, listen. All the arms you reach out for me All the eyes smile tenderly But still at least for dreams I see Get all the world leads back Georgia. Oh, my Georgia. It's a song, a song for you. It's just an old sweet song. Let it be Georgia. Oh, my, my. The photographer has told me to give the bride and groom some marital advice, and having been married 38 years myself, I'm not going to give them any marital advice. I'm simply going to wish them a long and happy life together. Aloha, Adam and Shelley. We're so glad and so happy for both of you. We're looking forward to you coming to visit us in Hawaii. We've been married for a big two years, but it was 23 years together before that, and the advice is talk to each other all the time and compromise. That's the most important thing of any relationship. We wish you well in muzzle time. Uh, Adam, I don't know if it's uh, significant that you're married with a background of Alcatraz. <laughs> it must have some significance, but let's, I'm quite sure you're gonna, two of you are gonna be very happy. We wish you only the best. Take care. Uh, the only thing I miss is you coming in, going into my pool and taking the weights out from the steps so I can take the, the steps out. I have to do that myself now. Maybe you and Shelly will do that for me. Long life, good health. Okay. I'm only talking because I know why they asked for this and I would have asked for the same thing had I thought about it when we got married. Um, we're celebrating our ninth anniversary by being here this weekend, and it was a beautiful ceremony, and I'm very glad we were here, and I'm very glad that Shelly and Adam live near us so that they're not just cousins, but really friends and parts of our family, and um, we uh, wish them every happiness. We love them very much. Absolutely. Wish them all the best in the world, and it's, it was very special for us to celebrate our anniversary by hearing their lovely ceremony and reaffirming our love for each other. Adam and Shelley, may it be with your enemies as it was with the two and forty children who mocked the baldness of the prophet Elisha. May they be set upon by two she-bears and torn limb from limb. Good luck and good life. No, don't implicate me, no. Je Come on. I don't know what she's going to say. All right. Jen and I live in Washington, D.C. You need to talk into the microphone. And uh, we, when... When Adam was first looking around for a girlfriend, he was living the single life, very sad. Jen and I were trying to set him up, and I don't know. So I we mean, we thought we found the perfect woman. She was a, she was a, well, she was a Swedish dominatrix, and it seemed like a perfect fit for Adam. But Adam was like, no. I, d I don't know what what the problem Shelley. was. And stick with her. We were he, like, he what? The, we found out the problem was he was already dating Shelley. And so, she's he, either a Swedish dominatrix in disguise, 
or she's just the she, perfect woman. She's actually time. she's done something more and better and above <laughs> what you know the, what the women we could offer Adam right. could do. So it, those weren't really words of wisdom. For those, let's go to bed. Wait, is that Swedish dominatrix still available? <laughs> well, actually, you know, she is, and she's in New York. So uh, there we go. Uh, uh, but I, one one serious thing to say is that um, when when I was talking to Adam very early on, before he'd really come out of the closet in terms of having a girlfriend, he he said he said that. Uh, well, we were talking about this new girlfriend that he had, and he's, I said, well, you know, what is it about her that you like? And he said, she really just makes me happy. And so I think that that, that really, that's what, that's what did it for Adam. Shelly really makes him happy, and so I think that's, that's great. Sure, I'll keep it short because I'm already on tape with my presentation, but I just want to reiterate the three rules that I gave for, for Adam and Shelly. Number one, laugh a lot. Number two, give thanks for the blessings that you have. And number three, focus on the journey, not the destination. That's all. Hey, Adam. Hey, Shelly. Ducky, I'm so proud of you for finally doing it. I want to tell you that, remember the conversation we had about Chinese food and chicken versus shrimp? Even though you're going to keep getting chicken, chicken is so great. And Shelly is the best chicken you could ever have. Gourmet style, just beautiful, tasty chicken, and you have it totally made. So take care of her, take care of yourself, and keep in touch, and no more pinching in my butt, all right? Adam and Shelly, I'm right by the bar where I belong. I wanted to say Mazal Tov. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I know I haven't finished business school yet, so I'm not ready to be your financial advisor, but the one piece of advice I can give you is buy low, sell high. Adam and Shelly Malstov, I just want to um, recount the moment at which I knew that this was actually going to happen, which was, Adam, you'd started working at RCL Co. and you were dating people and you weren't really shy about telling people about your dating life and kept them coming in and every time you were gone on a date with someone, there was a little story about why it wasn't working out and um, you know what was good and what was bad about them and like the whole office would get together and talk about your love life and um, when you started dating Shelly it was a little bit different there was uh, there was a moment when you came in you were just like you know this one's playing games and we were like oh and we all thought that was a bad sign and, she, and, and then Adam said but I like these games she's playing and I you know I like playing these games and that's when we knew that this one was gonna stick and the other ones had all kind of fallen by the wayside not like the other ones just fallen by the wayside so I'm glad that we're finally here at this moment that we knew was coming a while ago and miles Tov, and best of luck or Shelly, this is for you. One more thing. When I first started at RCL Co. my first week, that's when you had first started talking to Shelly. And Shelly, I want you to know that Adam was totally sweating you. He had, you had walked by him on the street and not said anything to him. And I don't think you just saw him, but he saw you. And he was talking to Troy and was saying, Troy, should I run after her? Should I go get her or what? And he did it, but he sweated the whole afternoon about you. So I want you to know that, all right, Shelly? So, God bless. Fine, and you would like to know about how happy I am tonight and why this is so special to me. It's very special because I have been in love with Shelly since the day she was born. Uh, there are not many opportunities for so much pleasure in your life. And I must say that I have a daughter and son-in-law who have given me, well, almost the greatest story in my life. I have one small regret. Here I am, the grandmother of such a great family, and the man who would have been the grandfather died too long ago. But I have a feeling he, in some way, is sharing the story. So, and I'm looking forward to more joyous events in this wonderful family. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. May the love that we share be an inspiration to you all. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Well, you know that we love you guys, and we're so psyched that you moved to San Francisco because you've really become some of our really close friends, and we really love spending time with you, and we just wish you all the best. 
on your on your wedding day and for and for all the years that you'll spend together because we know you'll be together for a long long time. And let me just say one other thing. The the, the <laughs> pressure that you may be feeling from your parents and grandparents about <laughs> children, you'll get none of that from us. Right. Just take your time. Well, you guys are the oldest children and we know from Shine Adam they're not. So they won't be feeling quite as much pressure for the childbearing. Right. Right. However, I have to say for I've been all a lot of it though. <laughs> I know. We don't hear it. But for all of your guys' travels, we're so glad that you landed in San Francisco to spend more time right near all of us. We couldn't feel any luckier to have made such great new friends. Wonderful to have you nearby. And we wish you all the best for everything to come. Wonderful. Mazel tov! Mazel tov! Mazel tov! Hi, Shelly and Adam. It's Susan. Henry's over there conversing. I'm not sure if this is working because Jamie just had it and she dropped it. Um, you started without me. I started without you. <laughs> so we're absolutely primarily thrilled to know you, but mostly because you're doing this before us. And we get to copy all of your secrets. We've stashed away the program. Don't be surprised if it looks familiar. I'm and changing my name <laughs> to Adam so we don't have to redo the imitation. Exactly, and I'm Shelly, so we are officially Shelly and Adam. We're saving money. <laughs> and I love your tiara. Can I borrow it? Please, 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 please. I've been looking everywhere. At least tell me where you got it. Um, anyway, muzzle top to both of you. We, For as short of a time as we've known you, we feel really close to you, and we love you, and we're so happy, and all that good stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I won't drop the microphone. Um, well, I was, was going to tell Susan before, let's think of what we're going to say, and then all of a sudden I see her in front of the camera. So, Hi, we're live. Um, just really en enjoy getting to know you guys over the years, and, and um, look forward to many more book groups and having you over and stuff like that. Okay, I'm <laughs> getting funny looks. Over. And we won't make you read a book. Shelly and Adam, this is Nikki, Ryan, and Daniel. Mazel tov on the occasion of your wedding. It's been an awesome party. We've had a wonderful time. And thank you so much for having us. you great people to know. Always happy, always smiling, no matter what the circumstances are. Have a wonderful honeymoon, a wonderful life, and we look forward to being close friends of yours in San Francisco or wherever we may be. And a big thank you for letting us bring Daniel to his very, very first Jewish wedding. He's been loving it. Thank you. Hi, Shelly and Adam. Hello. How are you? <laughs> You're probably doing very well. We don't really know what you say. It's a very... Uh, they asked us to give some marital advice. So being, uh, I know what, four, year, four, four years, years and change. Uh, I don't think we really can give you a lot. <laughs> um, but I can say that your love will only grow stronger. And I'm sure, I'm certain of that. It only gets better and better as time goes by. And I saw you, uh, I saw you today. It was only, what... I know, half an hour, an hour ago, and I saw the looks in your eyes, and I think that you're one of the most happy couples I've seen in your marriage, uh, other than us, of course, like we were, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, you're really wonderful, we love you, Yeah, we, we love wish you, you all the best and all the happiness, you deserve it, and um, we, we want to see you as much as we can. And it's good that you're local too for us. <laughs> and when, I don't want you to move as you move so quickly. Don't move from here too soon. And that's it. Yeah, that's it from me too. Bye. We have all the information. And uh, if you give us $100 in small bills sent to each of our home addresses, you won't hear anything more from us. However, if you don't, the beginning um, of our, if you will, uh, Hijacking well, is going to be about. Oh, oh there you won't hear about Amsterdam yeah. Avenue, you, yeah. or the purchases therein with La Mamacita. No. no, Adam. The thing I the thing I remember mostly about Adam is he hated our neighborhood. He hated wandering out at night on 109th Street. He was terrible. Jenna, what do you have? Too much incriminating evidence to give any of it up right now. When you're ready to have children, call me. This is not enough. We need more money. <laughs> Shelly, I'm told that I'm supposed to give you stories about when you were young or about your work life or about other, other kinds of advice. I've known you in all those capacities. I knew you when you were young and I've known you in a work situation and I have no advice for you whatsoever. 
Shelley and Adam. I wish you much, much happiness. I'm really impressed with the way you put this beautiful wedding together. I've enjoyed every moment of it, and um, I think that it shows that you have a lot of creativity when it comes to making things work, and I think you're going to have a very happy marriage. Shelly and Adam, I want to wish you well and a long life of happiness. And I am told that you are interested in marital advice. Well, now, I think that Wayne and Carol would not be appropriate to give you marital advice since their marriages were in the toilet. However, if you're looking for marital advice, I suggest you look to your parents because all four of them are wonderful role models. Good luck to you both. Um, I'd just like to wish you both the best. Uh, you're, you're two people that um, I feel really know how to live life and live life to its fullest. And I've, uh, Shelley, remember when you were traveling in India and around the world and getting all those postcards from you? I was just, just very impressed with your gusto and, and exuberance and everything. And I, I just want to wish both of you the best. And. Uh, very happy for you both. It was a very, very beautiful wedding. In fact, I was doing some of the filming and I got a kind of a panoramic shot of the whole scene. So, hope you guys get a chance to look at it. Okay? Bye bye. All I can say to you, Shelly and Adam, is keep your sense of, of adventure. Thank you very much. That was very kind. Keep your sense of adventure. Work hard, but, but as you get older, work less and less. And I'm sure that uh, as time goes on that you will continue to find the happiness that you're seeking. Keep on traveling. Keep on trucking. Hi. We're Mitch and Lisa. And we wanted to say, oh yeah, and our baby. Close up. Thank you very much. And I'm sure Lisa will appreciate that. Shelly and Adam, we just wanted to let you know that we had the best time last night at your rehearsal dinner. Um, and your wedding was just wonderful. And we don't necessarily have any advice for you, but certainly a wish that your uh, married life continues to be as um, adventurous, exciting, and fun as your last four years together seem to have been. And we look forward to sharing more time with you. Congratulations. We must have a hamotzi before food is served. So I'm for Hamotzi. What about you guys? <laughs> That's what I figured. So we're going to have the grandmothers, Shelley's grandmother and Adam's grandmother, lead us in a Hamotzi, which is over bread. If you look to my right, some of you are left, some of you are right. Grandmothers, could you, could you uh, do it real loud? I've been practicing that for three weeks. How about that? Give him a hand again. All right. That's right. I would like to take a uh, moment now to introduce your uh, host and hostess for tonight, Martin Lenore Schneiderman. How about that? We're going to have a few toasts tonight. Uh, you saw what, last night how outstanding it was, and we're going to try to match that tonight. It's going to be tough. But I must tell you that just yesterday, I was anticipating the excitement of today, which of course was yesterday's tomorrow. And yesterday's tomorrow is now today, which very soon will be tomorrow's yesterday, right? 
Now, I thought to myself, I said, myself, if only Shelly and Adam's tomorrows were like today and yesterday, Paul and I would be broke. No question about it. How about that? Bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> now, realistically, I, I must tell you, I have been anticipating this for many more years than just yesterday. In fact, I think back, Shelley, you'll remember this, we were on a vacation in Pennsylvania when you were only about 10 years old. And not only was she having the usual fights with her brother, but she had a fight with anyone with a surname of Schneiderman. Anyone within her line of sight with a surname of Schneiderman was in trouble. And at that very moment, I looked down at this little girl and I said, wouldn't it be nice if someday this little girl would go up, find a nice Jewish boy, <laughs> settle down 2,500 miles away from me? <laughs> be careful what you wish for, even fleetingly. Because, lo and behold, it's happened. Now, I must say, as to Adam, I am, I am thrilled. He is loving, articulate, bright, caring, a wonderful son-in-law, and I would say a very good companion for their journey into life. But I would like their base camp for the journey to be around Washington, D.C., if you don't mind. How about that? All right. Good idea. I, I knew I'd get support because out of about 140 people here, there's only about seven people from San Francisco, huh? <laughs> now, uh, we're going to have a number of toasts, and uh, leading me in, in throughout these toasts will be my beautiful bride, the mother of the bride, Lenore. How about a little hand for Lenore? But for the first toast, and we'll put you to sleep, don't worry, with these toasts. For the first toast, I'm going to call up uh, Sharon and Daniel. Hold on. Don't, don't get up yet. Uh, let me just tell you a little bit about Sharon. Sharon is Shelley's little sister. The princess in waiting. I've told her, now that Danny and Shelly are married, that Sharon, you're in trouble. I'm a little overprotective, I must tell you, because I've said to her, now that Adam is married, there is the person worthy of her hand has not been born yet. <laughs> so she's in a big time trouble. You want to introduce your son? Well, I, Marty's a tough act to follow, but my, my son is the most wonderful. The most honorable number one son, Daniel Schneiderman. Thank you. Rumor has it that my dad has a dowry out on me, so if anyone needs a hundred cows, <laughs> Apparently, the, the going rate right for me right now. Um, okay, hi, I'm Sharon. I'm Shelly's little sister. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, so bear with me. I wanted to welcome everyone to San Francisco to this beautiful wedding. 
Um, my sister is the most beautiful bride I've ever seen. If we can get that taken care of. Okay, but I wanted to start by saying, wow, what a year it's been for the Schneidermans. Um, my brother and sister got engaged within three days of each other, and since then, our lives have been a wedding whirlwind. <laughs> so on a selfish note, if I get one more pinch on the cheek and told, you're next, I'm gonna say that to everybody, to all you guys at every funeral I attend. <laughs> now, Adam, I hope you can rise to the challenge. You see, I've taken the 25 year long course called Living with Shelly 101. <laughs> and it ain't easy. I must say it's a complicated course. You would think by now that I'd have my PhD in the subject. My brother, he flunked out years ago. <laughs> my parents, they're a little better. I'm at the top of the class with a C average. <laughs> now, I don't want to say that she has a hot temper. <laughs> but I do know that ever since she moved to San Francisco, the earthquakes are afraid to come out. <laughs> the Santa Ana winds and El Nino has rerouted themselves. And the cable cars only go in one direction, away from the marina district. But Shelly has this amazing ability to make every situation positive. I remember going to her for advice on boys when I wasn't sure if it was gonna work out. And she said, he's Hungarian, you're always hungry, why not? For the next guy, with her big bright smile, she turns to me and says, he's a lawyer, you've broken the law, you're soulmates. <laughs> and so for that great attitude and lust for life, I remain in awe of you. Um, truly, Shelbel, you are my biggest supporter, my teacher, my role model, my best friend, my partner in crime, and more than anything, I hate being 3,000 miles away from you, most of the time. <laughs> and who better for her to marry than Adam Decker? I mean, honestly, it took, me, it took me 20 years to appreciate how wonderful my brother is. It took me 20 minutes with Adam. And so, um, from me, from all of us, I'm sure that everyone agrees that congratulations, mazel tov, everything I can say, l'chaim, you guys are the most beautiful couple, I wish you all the happiness in the world. Ditto? <laughs> That's a tough act to follow. I'm, I'm Dan, I'm the brother. When I was uh, asked to say a few words tonight, as, uh, as the older brother, I thought it'd be a good idea to, to give Shelly some advice. But uh, I wanted to make sure that the advice was comprehensive and well-founded and so I didn't trust my own experience and I decided to do a little research and I was rummaging through my parents house and I I found my mom's old home economics textbook from the 1950s <laughs> and uh, and that textbook gave some advice on on how to be a good wife and, and here's here's what it said and I quote have dinner ready Plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal. 
This is a way of letting him know that you have been thinking of him and are concerned about his needs. <laughs> Most men are hungry when they come home from work, and the, and the prospect of a good meal is part of the warm welcome needed. Prepare yourself. Take 15 minutes to rest, so you'll be refreshed when he arrives. <laughs> Touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair, and be fresh looking. He has just been with a lot of work-weary people. His boring day may need a lift. <laughs> Clear away the clutter. Make, last, what, make one last trip through the main part of the house just before your husband arrives, gathering up papers and such. Then run a dust cloth over the tables. <laughs> your husband will feel he has reached a haven of rest and order. And it will give you a lift, too. Minimize all noise. At the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise of the washer, dryer, dishwasher, or vacuum. Greet him with a warm smile and be glad to see him. Some don'ts. Don't greet him with problems or complaints. Don't complain if he's late for dinner. Count this as minor compared with what he might have gone through that day. <laughs> Make him comfortable. Have him, have him lean back in a comfortable chair or suggest that he lie down in the bedroom. Have a cool or warm drink ready for him. Arrange his pillow and offer to take off his shoes. <laughs> Speak in a low, soft, soothing and pleasant voice. Allow him to relax and unwind. Listen to him. You may have a dozen things to tell him, but the moment of his arrival is not the time. Let him talk first. Make the evening his. Never complain if he does not take you out to dinner or to other places of entertainment. Instead, try to understand his world of strain and pressure and his need to be home and relax. Anyway, I ran this by my wife, Lisa. And <laughs> And after a cold stare, she said, uh, change all the hymns to hers and you'll, you'll start to get the hang of it. <laughs> but seriously, uh, Shelley, if I could say one thing, remember this. Marriage is an institution and something to which you must be 100% committed. And Sharon and I have always thought that you should be committed to an institution. <laughs> Shelley was born 15 months after me, and in certain respects uh, has had to follow in my footsteps at, in high school and uh, later at college at Columbia. Uh, and then she met Adam, and it seemed uh, as if Shelley would, would beat, me to, beat me to the punch and be the first of the Schneiderman kids to get engaged and get married. Uh, so of course I couldn't let that happen and I proposed to Lisa. But in reality, uh, Shelley has always been a free spirit and has forged her own path. And, uh, and, and what an adventurous path it has been, taking her from uh, around the world and back again. And from what we all know about Adam, uh, there could be no one better for Shelley to share those adventures with. So here's to Adam and Shelley. All right. I told you he was wonderful. In fact, they were all wonderful. I've been waiting for this night my whole life. <laughs> of course, I, what I couldn't possibly anticipate was the emotion that I was feel. I was doing fine all week. We came out on Wednesday. There was a ton of stuff to do. But today, as we walked down the aisle, 
tears welled up in my eyes and I just couldn't, I couldn't get a hold of myself. And I turned to Shelly and she said, Mom, deal with it. <laughs> now, I've always been a very practical person and I feel like I've dealt with a lot of things, a lot of life cycle events in my life. After all, I dealt with it when she went off to college. I dealt with it when she went around the world for 13 months. I even dealt with it when she moved out here with Adam. But today, it just absolutely overwhelmed me. Something's beeping. Um, in any event, I feel totally confident turning over my beautiful, precious daughter to Adam. I feel confident that she, he will take good care of her, that they will love each other. But Adam, now you deal with it. <laughs> Uncle Kenny is Lenore's brother. Now I've been through three wives with Uncle Kenny. <laughs> this time he has it right with Lil. Lil, how about standing up? We told Ken that this is the third and last wife. Number one, because he's very happy, and number two, if he weren't, I'd kill him. But Ken, come on up and uh, offer your toast to the bride and groom. Chinese dinner the night before, almost similar, and I had the occasion to marry the love of my life. Stand up, Lil. <laughs> and I had a best man at my wedding, and his name was Marty. And Marty proceeded to do a 45-minute <laughs> Roast. In rhyme. Payback time. <laughs> but, 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 I want everybody to say thank you to Wayne. Stand up, Wayne. Get rid of the camera. Because I forgot to bring papers with me and I said Wayne go to my hotel room please and get the papers for me and he dutifully did unfortunately he only brought, brought the first page <laughs> so in making a toast for a bride and groom, now named Ducker. Here we go. Here we go. Can I go now? Go to it. Oh, yeah. You've had a few drinks, let me deal with it. Okay. Should only be undertaken by one hell of a big sucker. But being a proud uncle, I agreed to make a toast, and have also avoid at the same time making it into a roast. So this is your notes, not my notes. The frustrations grew much further when making a rhyme for Shelly. Because I could only come up with belly, jelly, and smelly. <laughs> and using her baby nickname of Missy Pissy, 
<laughs> would only send her into a fit. So hissy. I do have one question for Adam that the rabbi forgot to ask. Where's the rabbi? Oh, hi, rabbi. In order to make sure that he is up to the task by saying, I do, before the ring he did hand her, the question should have been, is that your final answer. <laughs> but now is the time to really get serious? And having Adam in the family makes us all delirious. We wish them both a lifetime of happiness, joy, and good luck. Knowing Adam will make it happen with his Yiddish a cup. <laughs> to Adam and Shelley. All right. Shakespeare, eat your hat out, huh? How about that? Okay, now. We have another speaker. Oh, wait. We have another speaker. That was very sweet. There is Adam's sister, who is Amy and Matt. Matt Cohen, come on up here. Amy is disarmingly charming. Uh, no matter what she says, the warmth comes through just like her brother. And Matt is her soulmate, and I'm sure whatever they say, we're going to enjoy because they are warm and wonderful people. All right, go ahead. Thank you. nervous about speaking before and then as soon as Dan started speaking I had this overwhelmingly feeling of calm and relief because sitting on my dresser in Burlington where we came in from is a copy of How to Be a Good Wife which I had been debating for a month over whether to bring and read to my brother because I thought with his love of history I would read him some sort of you know piece from the 1950s about being a good wife and actually, I originally got the piece about um, two months before when Matt brought it home from work from all of his friends, and he gave it to me to read, and I read it over and said, thank God we're not married. <laughs> Let's keep everything the same. <laughs> so I left it at home because I didn't want to set up any bad examples or encourage any plans. But the, uh, the other part I wanted to say was, in um, my family I have a bit of a reputation, if we're talking about my good traits for being, um, I, I think it's called sensitive, is, is the phrase that always comes extra up. Sensitive. <laughs> yeah, extra sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> if we're talking about my bad traits, it's always that Amy is over dramatic and easy to cry. Um, and particularly this happened a lot in our house growing up. Um, concerning Adam, not because he was one of those brothers who liked to tease a lot or um, pick on me or make fun of me, but on the rare occasion when Adam got in trouble, which um, was really, really very rare in our family, although I was worried that it might happen a little bit more after people told my parents all of the bad things Adam did in college last <laughs> night. But anyway, if he would get in trouble or yelled at for any reason, and sometimes this happened about a half hour later, I would usually break into tears and start crying, at which point my parents would come over and say, what is the matter with you? What are you doing now? And I'd say, don't yell at Adam. <laughs> don't be mean to Adam and cry continuously, in which point we would forget about being mad at Adam and spend the rest of the next few minutes helping Amy to stop crying. <laughs> so I'm sharing this for two reasons. First of all, if I get through tonight's speech without crying, you'll know it's a great accomplishment for me. And the other part is I, I wanted to share two things about this history of my crying um, with the rest of you guys. First, um, my family already has learned how to deal with this really well. And so they're pretty well accustomed to what they should do around Adam. But for his new family and Shelly, a little bit of a threat. I just wanted to let you know to treat my brother very, very well as he joins your family because you will have me to deal with and I can cry in an instant if anyone doesn't do that. On the other 
note, a much more positive thing to say. Um, I think my emotions are very strongly connected to Adam, and I, he's an amazing brother and calls me every Friday to discuss the week that passed and talk about the, the weekend plans ahead. And as a married man, I expect him to do the same thing, <laughs> although I'm going to give him two weeks to start to do it. Oh. But one of the things that, that Matt and I talk about the most when we see Adam is... I think I'm going to cry. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I've known the Ducker family for quite some time now, about 12, years, 13 years. <laughs> 13 years. And I've seen Adam go through all these life changes, and we all got to be privileged that last night, uh, obviously. But, um, and, you know, he had the preppy look for a while. I think he even had a mullet. <laughs> 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 for a while he liked camping but you know then, then he liked he liked the Dow Jones for a while but so I, it's, it's really hard to pin Adam down so I always make fun of him whenever I see him but um, he's had a lot of different looks but I've never seen him be as happy and as great a look as tonight with his bride his beautiful bride Shelly Adam has really been like a brother to me for, for 13 years, and I'm really glad to be here and to celebrate. And, and just to close, as his sister, I will cry when anyone's bad to him, but I'm just equally as happy when he's so happy. And so I, I can't help but feel that tonight is a great night because he is obviously glowing in the company of his, his true love. So he goes, the Now, uh, we may have uh, some additional discussions later, but for our last speaker now, I would like to uh, call upon my now Machatunim. I will tell you that I've heard all sorts of stories about Machatunim from hell, but I lucked out. Paul and Shirley are wonderful, wonderful people. <laughs> No, Lisa, I have, don't, not on your side. I have wonderful Makatunum there, too. But uh, I must say, Paul and Shirley are just wonderful people. It wasn't until I, last night I realized they were Chinese, but that, that's okay. I don't care. I love them anyways. I love them all. Uh, Paul, come on up here, and if you have a few words to say... Alright. We've, we've heard some wonderful things about uh, Shelley and Adam. And I, I too would toast them for, uh, for their, their spontaneity, their affection, and their obvious love for each other, which I think we've seen here tonight and today which is what I think we've all, why we've all gathered here to celebrate this very, very special night. So. I also want to thank the Schneidermans, who I think through their generosity tonight and uh, the, 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 this marvelous, marvelous wedding that they've uh, put on, have also uh, shown their generosity and affection and inclusiveness. And it may be a bit of a cliche, but I, I think it, it, in this case it certainly is true. This is really a combining of two families I speak for Shirley and myself that uh, as we watch these two young people grow and uh, their love continue and, and develop and, and have all the joy that we wish them, we also feel very, very fortunate and blessed to be part of this, this Schneiderman family. And uh, the combining of these two families is, is, is so in evidence tonight as these two young people combine their lives that we feel very fortunate to be included in part of it. Thank you very much. As I must tell you, uh, what, what this is a lead into is I realize as I was looking at your faces, your smiling, happy faces, I said to myself, myself? I don't know most of you. Who are you? So Adam and I 
decided that we would uh, go through some of the tables, if I have a list of the tables, and introduce you amongst each other a little bit. Adam, you take care of uh, table number one. Raise your hand when you hear your table. How about that? Let's talk about table number one and table number two at the same time. Who are uh, the representatives of Morningside Heights in the room. And uh, as Shelly and I alluded to last night, we have truly, truly great friends from college. We, I think we're actually talking with Joanna when we said that, where I was characterizing our friendship with these people as the kind of people who could call on a Thursday and say, I need you here. And Shelly and I would be on a plane on a Friday if we hadn't already missed the red eye. And, and we truly mean that. We love you all. Some of you live here. I'm looking at Tina at the moment. But uh, you all are truly, truly great friends. And I've traveled you know, from God knows how many continents. And we love you. We're glad you're here. What's next? That's yours. Table three. Well, table three. Can we see that? We'll say that together. Table three is, uh, is us. You know, and we, we sort of thought long and hard about who to sit with tonight. And uh, in the end, we came back to our first inclination, which was to sit with our parents and our grandmothers and uh, our aunt and very, very closest friend of that generation, Abby Belkin. And, and uh, we love these people very, very much. Right. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, perhaps. But our parents are as important to us as, as anybody in the world. And we wouldn't dream of sharing this, this uh, wedding meal with anybody else. We love you guys. Four is a wonderful table, and in doing seating, some of you, some of you may find that you're grouped regionally, and then there are some that are grouped kind of, but all kinds of cross references go through your head. But at table four, we have some couples that um, we danced at their wedding some years ago. I think when Adam and I were, I guess it was two years ago, so we weren't that newly dating. We must have been dating for two years at that point. We danced at their wedding, and we just learned last night that our dear friend Debbie Oblon is pregnant. <laughs> We have another couple at the table, Sue Bessler and Henry Sobel, who are engaged. And, and you can imagine they have been some of our closest friends in days of late because they have so much to talk about, and we both find each other so interesting. <laughs> I hope when the weddings have come and gone, I'm sure we'll still feel that way. And then we have some very dear friends, actually both from the East Bay. There was that connection. One is my friend Amy and John from my days at Chiron, my first job out here, and she was my closest compadre. And Bob and Nessa Feller, who is uh, our dear, dear friends and whose lives we envy after a beautiful barbecue at their uh, house in East Bay. And ever since that time, we've actually been talking shop about home buying. So we'll see that where that ends up. But welcome to the table. Thanks. Table five. Not this way. Shares the uh, dubious distinction, or uh, you know, I suppose, I hope dubious is a generous term dubious distinction of having worked with me um, at a, a couple of companies, the Concord Group here in San Francisco, Robert Charles Lester and Company on the East Coast, and then sort of various sort of other DC friends and good people. Also a newly engaged couple, Troy and Kathleen, give a wave. Engaged less than a month. We're looking forward to celebrating with them. And uh, great, great friends, you know, and, and Shelly, and both of my, Shelly, my professional lives, so spending time with people we love and want to be with 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, sometimes even 16 hours a day um, is really what makes it all worth it and we love you guys. You know, it was alluded to earlier that there were seven people from San Francisco and uh, we haven't actually counted it up but there was a pretty, lore, pretty loud roar, a roar of disapproval I think when uh, the idea of us leaving town was brought up. But uh, this is another San Francisco table and great, great friends. You know, Shelly and I, this is table six. Right. Shelly and I love San Francisco for a lot of reasons, but the most important reason is it's a place where you call somebody who you met at a party one time and they're actually glad to hear from you. Yeah. And they say, oh, we, we actually do remember meeting you and we would in fact like to see you again. And these are people that have said that to us. Um, also, a special, a special acknowledgement for uh, Jamie Becker, 
and uh, Glenn Zwieg, who are celebrating their first anniversary with us. There are a bunch of anniversaries in the room, and we may have, yeah, and we may have missed some of them, but that's one we want to point out. We appreciate it. Also, another uh, sort of pending birth there, Lisa Gavelber. A little rubber belly for the whole group. We're looking forward to baby Gavelber being a part of the San Francisco family. And uh, we love you guys from San Francisco. Thanks. I'm not going to say table seven, I'm just going to say DC! You, you may recognize the ravishing ladies in red. That is my sister and my sister in law. Between them is my closest and oldest friend who has put up with me forever, including three and a half weeks. 24-7 in a car, Stacia. My brother, who beyond Stacia's dealing with me, has survived 29 years of it and gave a fabulous speech. I was expecting a roast. Okay. My other dear high school friends, Shannon and Daniel, who have traveled to San Francisco with their one-year-old, so I'm thrilled I didn't travel with them. Sharon's dear friend, Amanda, and some other partners in crime, Emil Hill and Noah Pines, and I just have to share all the Simhas in the room because I can't hog them, but he is recently engaged to the beautiful blonde, Jody. And we are looking forward to a whole lot of causing trouble at your wedding. Table eight over here, wave your hands in the air, there you go. This is the uh, two clans, two families. You know, one of the great things about these weddings is that not only do we sort of get to join, you know, Shelly and my family, but we in fact get to join parts of our own family, and in this case, parts that have really never met. But this is uh, the Flanders, which is my mother's family con cousin contingent, Courtney, Paul, and uh, the Ducker contingent, which is Jesse and Eric Ducker. Um, this group has sort of come from all over the United States, the Southeast, South Central, North Central, New York, California, the whole shebang. Uh, we're glad you guys are here and it's great celebrating with you. Table number nine. Hi, let's hear. That's a step toe table. Step two and step two alumni. I want you to realize that Sharon's Bas Mitzvah, there were three tables of step toe. Now it's down to one. You know who gave the best gifts now, huh? Now you know. Table number 10. How about let's hit table number 10. And table number 11. Together, 10 and 11. They're cousins and good friends. Now, we have on, yeah. That's all you get. As good as it gets. Get a lawyer. Ten, ten and eleven.